Hey Bible lovers, just wanted to shoot a quick intro to this video review of the NESB 2020 Humble Lamb History Edition. And with any first edition Bible, there's always that risk that there's going to be some mistakes in it. And this edition is no exception. I am reminded of the Coma Penny error in the RSV Quintel. Also in the Traveris, I'm reminded of the O instead of the I in the drop caps in Isaiah and the first edition of the NET thin line, there were some spelling errors in there. Throughout history, even going all the way back to the 1611, where they have the he and she edition, where in Ruth, one edition accidentally said he, and the other edition said she correctly. So these are things to expect. They are disappointing. I can understand how it could be frustrating, but that's part of the benefit of having a first edition because you have something that's rather collectible just because it's a first edition and also because there are a few errors. In this Humble Lamb edition you will see right here on the title page it is listed as the authorized King James Version so that's error number one. Now let's go to the table of contents and you will see here where Leviticus is misspelled. That's error number two. Once you get to the end of the Bible you will see the Dory Art has these two images repeated twice so you are going to be missing two Dory art pieces. Humble Lamb and Daniel have acknowledged these mistakes and have said that they've already been fixed for the next edition. So when the second edition of this volume comes out, these mistakes will be corrected. I know it can be disappointing, but there's a couple of positives here. Number one, it's a beautiful edition. And as far as we know, there are no errors in the text of the Bible. So give them some grace. And let's give them some kudos for a project that was pretty aggressive, really unique. Anyhow, here's my review. God bless you. Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to bring you your Nichols worth and today from Humble Lamb we have the Amethyst History Bible in the NASB 2020. Humble Lamb is really, really focusing on making sure that every aspect of your Bible reading is an experience from opening the box, from looking at the cover, from the art gilding, and everything beyond that. And we're going to take a look and explore that. First of all, just their packaging with their custom tape is amazing. And then you have the boxes, especially the recent boxes that have the logo for the History Bible, the logo for the Shepherd Bible and the Fox Orange, and then the Lion. This is when they were making their boxes a little bit more plain. Just looking at the box tells you that you're going to be experiencing something great when you open it. They also have this card that lets you know about the Bible and that it has a lifetime warranty. If anything was to go wrong with it from a manufacturing standpoint, they would be able to replace that for you. And we have the Shepherd and we have the Lion. Each of them have their own experience as you read through the scripture. So let's just take a first quick look at the lion. The lion, the way you can tell is it has the brackets on the side and that lets you know that this is the KJV lion. This one has one with the lion art gilding, but mine happens to be the one with the solid. Humble Lamb's art gilding is simply untouchable when it comes to the quality and what they do with it to make it dark and perfect. I have never, ever gotten a Humble Lamb that had damaged gilding. This one has an 11 point font, blue drop caps, words of Christ in blue. We see the words of Christ in blue. They're nice and visible. So we're going to set this one down and we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the shepherd because there's a couple of experiences you can have with the shepherd as well. You can get several different colors and with the shepherd you can get the dark accent gilding that matches the cover. Beautiful. Or you can get the one with the shepherd in it. I absolutely love that. I think it's beautiful. Now with the history there's also a couple of options. You can get the regular gilding or you can get this one. Check that out. So there's a lot going on here. On this side we have the law for the Old Testament. We have Old Testament patriarchs and Old Testament stories. And then we have Jesus in the middle of it all. And we have the cross and New Testament stories. Jesus on the boat, Jesus being baptized in water, Jesus as a baby, the lamb. It's just, this is just really well done. So you're getting a full blown story before you even open the Bible. So now let's take a look at this goat skin. Compared to their previous goat skins, you can see this one has more of a shine to it. These are a little bit more flat. And what that does is it really makes that grain stand out. Because when you look at these, you can see the grain but the grain in this just pops. It's just like bang, really beautiful. And check this out. The liner is also the Mauritian goat skin. So it's going to have that same grain pattern. This has that same shine. And one thing that's nice about this is check it out. This is the lunar yellow. These look virtually identical. So if you get the amethyst, which is a purple, 
then you're going to get that lunar yellow liner that matches this. And this is something that's really cool. Most of the time on premium Bibles, you're going to see this gold gilt line and gold foil accents. This one actually has the purple. I guess they found some purple ink. And that's just really cool. I think this looks sharp. And we're not even in the scripture yet. And look at all the experiences that we're having. One more thing I want to show you is to give you comparison to another purple Bible. If some of you are familiar with the NRSV with Apocrypha put out by Zondervan, this can kind of show you the differences between the purple. This one's more of an amethyst, more of a dark purple. So now let's dive in to the layout itself because that is where this really shines. So let's get into it. We got the history title page. And then now this one's not going to lay flat at the very beginning because it's so compact. This is almost two inches thick. So you've got a Bible that's two inches thick that has this small compact size. But when you open it, you're going to notice a few things. There is no real emphasis on the chapters or the verses. The chapters are very understated on the side of the page here. The verses are visible, but this is set up in more of a paragraph reader's format. This is an eight and a half Milo font. Each one of these drop caps are custom drawn and in full color. Each letter has its own design and its own artwork in it, telling the story of the Bible. So this entire thing is designed to get you to absorb and fully understand the stories in the Bible. So we don't have chapters and verses as our focal point. We have each individual story in the Bible as our focal point. And that story is led by a subtitle and of course your custom drop cap. As we look through it, that overhead view on this thing, this is just beautiful. This is a beautiful Bible. Well done. But there are some things about this that are going to be eccentric to your reading experience that some of you may not be used to that you want to take a look at. At the bottom here, you can see that it has Psalm of Thanksgiving and it's kind of in a gray. It gives you your page number and your references are on the outside column. But you notice sometimes they wrap around like this. When the references are wrapped around a story, you can see on this page how they kind of have that wraparound effect that looks really nice. And when you get to the poetic settings, you can see it's set up more like a verse by verse, but it still has that wraparound effect. And whenever there are extra references, like more than will fit in your normal column, they will wrap around that particular story. For example, like this. So you have some references. There's a few too many, so it goes around the bottom. It also happens when you're on this page as well, and it will go along the bottom. And that keeps all those references that pertain to that particular story in place. So it does look a little weird at first, but once you get used to it and really realize the goal of this Bible, it really makes a whole lot of sense. So I love the layout. I love the eight and a half point font. Now, one thing somebody pointed out is they thought that the words of Christ were in black and they are not. What they did, and I don't know if this was on purpose or I don't know if this is something that maybe was just done by the printer that they weren't expecting. I perceive this was intentional, but let's get to Luke chapter 4. And you can see these are the words of Christ, and they're more in a violet. And that violet more matches these accent subheadings that are in purple. Now, in their previous editions, you'll see that the words of Christ are definitely in a different blue. And see, this blue is definitely far more visible in contrast to that black. But these are in blue. It's just more of a violet blue. Another thing about this Bible that's really incredible is that the shepherd and the lion, these only have 66 of the Dory art pieces. This one has all 220. So this has a full suite of references and notes. It has all of the Dory art, an eight and a half point Milo font, all designed in a nice single column format with your references on the side. And it's in a compact format with a decent sized font, beautiful drop craps set up in stories. This is just simply amazing from a layout perspective. When you just think about the design of this Bible, it's so unique, it's so different, yet you don't lack anything. When you get to the back, you're going to have your maps, and there is no concordance. So that's one thing that's lacking in this one that you do have in the others. But again, this is the NESB 2020. I absolutely love it. I think this meets a real need for a lot of people who really want to take in the stories of the Bible and kind of slow down and just take them in and really see how Jesus plays out through the stories of the Scripture. God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on. This is your Nicholas Worth.